Happy Monday, everybody! Welcome to the craft table, and uh, welcome back to our little live stream crochet along on dolls. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. I see that the chat's been pretty busy already. Uh, so before we leap into it, we're going to do our customary tech check. We want to make sure you can see us and hear us. And uh, oh, I sound great today. Thanks, Summer. Good, good to know. <laughs> How's the Mr. Sound? And uh, we, we think, we hope, we ironed out the problems we were having last week. We shall see, of course. I'm just getting myself comfortable in my chair here. And uh, got my dolls, got my uh, yarn. We're gonna be doing some hair. We had a little vote last week to see if you guys wanted to do hair or clothing next. Hair one, so um, gonna do some hair, some very simple doll hair today. And uh, we've got, we're, I think we have a playlist in the description box down below that is the doll cow. If it's not there right now, it will be there once we finished up. Um, and so if you missed any of the previous crochet alongs, they're all contained there. So it's sort of like a doll series. Uh, we're just wrapping it all up and um, we will be on to something different soon, but not yet, not yet. Today, we got to do some doll here. Can everybody hear the mister? All right, while we're working on that, I'm going to just get my yarn chosen. I'm gonna be adding hair to this little person today with uh, this fun kind of weird little yarn that I used for the, the hair color originally. I'll explain more about that in a minute. Pair of scissors, yarn needle, and a small crochet hook. Gonna get to that too. Mister, can they not hear you? Okay, how about now, everyone? How do I sound? <laughs> Once we get this right, we're never ever changing another setting. <laughs> down the road and down the I think the I road. had my microphone muted. <laughs> you had your microphone muted? I think I had it muted the whole time. <laughs> Boomer live stream. <laughs> Great. Okay. Yes, it looks like I'm coming in clear. How's right, the volume? So How's the volume on my mic and Jada's mic? Loud Is it, and clear now. Great. Um, oh, fantastic. Should we come up a bit or go down a bit? No, oh, loud and clear. Sounds good. Well, that's typical. <laughs> hey, I heard that. <laughs> Just because you're over there doesn't mean I can't hear you. Okay, I'll turn my mic down a little bit. So I'm e I'm going to try and be equal with Jada's mic. Great. Okay. Um, I'm going to get into it. So to start, I'd like to thank Nico for <laughs> gifting a membership. I saw that come in just as we were getting going here. So before I do anything more, I want to thank Nico for that. And I want to say hi to Jojo who put out a uh, membership milestone. If you are a family member, if that means if you're a channel member, you get a monthly uh -huh. membership milestone. It's like a super chat. You can find it by clicking on the little uh, dollar sign icon button in the bottom of the live chat. That will give you the option to do a membership milestone if you are a member. Um, so make sure you... <laughs> You find that if you haven't had the chance to use it yet. Um, JC's asking about how does one go about gifting a membership? We've got a tutorial that YouTube put out that we shared um, in the community post a while ago. It's, I think you can buy them. If you're already a member, you can buy a gifted membership by going through that live chat dollar sign icon super chat button. Um, but they keep sort of changing things around. So you, it's best to kind of click on that and just sort of go through some of the prompts and see what's there um, because it might change how it looks depending on the software you're using. Um, and that's about all I know. Joanna with the membership milestone. So great to make this live stream. Yippee, great. So Joanna found it. <laughs> Thank you, Joanna. <laughs> and hi. Okay, we're going to get going here, everybody. So uh, if you're making the dolls along with us or doing some hair today, great. If not, uh, put your feet up, enjoy the, uh, the madness as it unfurls here over the next hour. <laughs> We're gonna get going. Um, there are a lot of ways that you can add hair to a doll. 
You can do it by crocheting extra hair and stitching it on. You can add it directly to the head. You can do it um, to the skull cap of the doll before you work the rest of the doll. And you can go back in and add it later. You can also use different tools. You can use a latch key hook. If you're a latch hook, if you've got one of those, um, you can use a regular crochet hook that's smaller than the hook that you use to make the doll. I'll explain why momentarily. And if you'd rather, you can also use um, a large eyed yarn needle like this one here. I'm gonna be using my small crochet hook today though, because I feel like that will make things a little faster. So I'm just gonna get my scissors and my, my little yarn needle out of the way. Ronald and Kathy Jones, members for 24 months. Hi guys, good morning my friends. You both sound great. Thank you very much. Glad you both could be here. I'm gonna have a little sip of my water. Okay, so another thing you might want to have is a measuring tape. Um, this one's missing his little tail, so let me grab my other measuring tape. <laughs> um, this will help you figure out how long to make the strands of your hair, depending on what kind of hairstyle you want to give your doll. So I'm just gonna go with a really simple long ponytail today, so a single ponytail. So what I wanna do is take my measuring tape, I'm going to go to the edge of the doll, so right where the hair cap meets the flesh tone. I'm gonna lay my measuring tape there. I'm gonna measure up to the top of the crown, which is a good two inches, and then I'm going to add another length of measuring tape. I'm picturing a long ponytail. So that brings me to about six inches. So I know that I want the hair or the length of yarn that leaves the edge of the forehead and then goes through what'll probably be like a little ribbon, maybe even a, an elastic band, and then becomes a ponytail, needs to be at least six inches long. So I'm gonna add a little bit of extra for knotting, trimming, etc. So seven inches per single strand, but I need to double that because I'm going to be um, hooking in the hair. So that means that each strand of yarn that I cut needs to be approximately 14 inches or in metric, that is 36 centimeters roughly. So what we I'm gonna do- We have a birthday girl in the house, Miss Samantha. Oh, happy birthday to Samantha. Happy birthday, 25 again. Yeah, that's me too. <laughs> I'm gonna snip one length of yarn that's a roughly 14 inches. And then I'm just going to cut a whole bunch of them that are all roughly the same size, just by kind of pairing up the ends and making each snip of yarn roughly the same size as the last. So I'm just gonna sort of, um, I don't know, what do, you, what do you call this? You're just sort of like measuring out lengths of yarn that are roughly the, all the same length just because you're laying them all next to each other. So I'm gonna do a whole bunch of those while we sit here and chit chat. I can take a quick peek at the stream, move my yarn to the other side of the table. That's a little easier for me. There we go. And what you can do is just cut a bunch. You don't have to cut them all, maybe get 10 or so, maybe a few more. Um, I'm going to need a strand of yarn for every stitch. Oh my gosh, Phyllis has just picked up a pattern at our Etsy shop. Thank you, Phyllis. <laughs> um, I'm going to use a strand of yarn for every stitch all the way around the head of my doll. So I know that there were what did we get up to? About 32 stitches all the way around at the widest part. So I know I need at least 32 lengths of yarn. So I'm gonna cut, eh, I'll start with um, 30, maybe even 25. And if I need more, I'll cut a few more. This just sort of depends on how it's going here. So what am I up to? About six, this'll be number seven. There's eight. Tell you what, I'll clip 10, I'll start hooking in the hair, and then I'll cut more as I need it. That sounds like a good plan. There's nine and 10. Mila with a membership milestone, loving the Monday live streams. Thank you, so are we. It's kind of a nice way to come down off the weekend. I don't know about the rest of you, but I was doing a little bit of yard work this weekend, didn't warm up appropriately and um, I'm fine, but I will say my lower back reminds me of the yard work that I did over the weekend whenever I lean forward. So <laughs> trying to keep good posture today while I crochet. 
Okay, here we go. I've got about 10 lengths of yarn. They're all around 14 inches long or 36 centimeters each. I'm gonna pull one out. I'm gonna fold it in half by taking the two little ends. So taking the two ends, laying them together. I'm going to flip my doll over. I'm starting at the back of the head. So what I'm gonna do is right here, right on the edge where the hair tone turns to skin tone, I'm gonna hook my yarn, or my hook I should say, and you can do this with a yarn needle too. I'm gonna hook that smaller hook. This is a much smaller hook than the one I used to crochet the doll. This is a 2.75 millimeter hook. I'm gonna hook that underneath the post or the full stitch, somewhere on the back. I'm gonna grab the yarn that I folded in half and just pull up a loop. So I've pulled up a loop. You can see it there on my finger. The rest of the tail is hanging. Now I'm just gonna grab the next strain of yarn. I'm gonna take the two ends, pair them together. So I folded my yarn length in half. Now I'm gonna find the next stitch. So this is the next stitch along the head. I'm going to grab that length of yarn, the first loop that I took off my hook. I'm gonna take my second loop place it on my hook. I'm going to pull that through the first loop and back through that new stitch, grab the first yarn and pull it taunt. And that is going to lock that first length folded in half into place. I'm going to pull up on that new loop. So this is the new loop. I'm just going to pull it out to the side here. So you can see my new loop. I'll put it on my finger. There's my new folded yarn, the new loop coming out of the next stitch. I'm going to grab the next length of yarn, fold it in half, trying to be as even as I can. Pick up the doll, go to the next stitch along the edge of that hair flesh tone line. Get that first loop back on the hook. I'm going to pull it down a little bit just so I can keep it under control. There we go. So that loop from the previous length is now on my hook. I grab my new loop, pull it back through the first loop and back through the new stitch. Pull taunt on that second folded length. So the first one's done. Now the second one is done and locked into place. And now my third length is movable through that third stitch. See there's the loop still on my hook. I'm going to take my hook out, leave that new third length up in the air, grab another length, fold it in half, go to the next stitch along the doll head. Here it is here. Get that loop that was left behind off the third length onto my hook. I can tighten it up a little bit. Take the new loop of the fourth length, pull it back through the previous loop, back through the hook, and then you pull tight on that previous length of yarn that locks it into place. And you can see all of my lengths now, the ones that I've added to the head, they're all locked into place. So there's a little bit, you can kind of pull it a little bit but they don't really want to come out. It's also helpful to make them really, really long because that gives you lots of length to kind of fiddle with. So now this is my new length. There's my new loop left on my hook. I'll just set that aside. And a sort of membership milestone. I'm just looking over my, yes, it's a membership milestone from Carol. Hi, Carol. Member for 54 months, goodness me, thank you. I wish I could add some hair to my own head as easily as Jada is adding hair to the doll. <laughs> hey, so do I. But you know what? I think you could. They're called extensions. I've never tried them, That's but funny. they do look good. <laughs> that's why That's why uh, uh, we like to wear wigs. <laughs> I've got my new loop. I'm going to put that on my hook, pull it back through my previous loop. Oops, wait, I got to go through the next stitch. Aha. So in through the next stitch, 
in through the previous loop, I'll tighten that loop up, grab the new loop, pull it back through the old loop, through the new stitch, and then I can tighten up that yarn. So now I've got these guys. Here's my new loop. I'll just, don't has, it doesn't have to be so big. I can see my loop. You can see it there, so that's easy. And I'm working my way around the whole head. Grab my next length, fold it in half, find the next stitch through the previous loop. I can make that a little tighter. Pull this through the old loop, through the new stitch, and then pause to tighten up on the previous. And now you've got hair. So because I'm doing a ponytail, and because I'm doing to pull this up over the existing um, hair cap that I made that's in that color, I don't need a tremendous amount of hair. But you could double up the number of lengths that you pull through each stitch all the way around. That would double up your hair. Or you could do this for every single stitch in each row all the way up the head. Mary Jean, thank you for picking up a couple of patterns at our Etsy shop. I really appreciate it. And on that note, before I, I'm going to pause here and grab a sip of my, my water. <laughs> Mr. Stitches with a thank you. Welcome, welcome to everybody who's just joining us. We're doing some doll hair today. Very simple doll hair. I'm just knotting it in kind of in a neat, almost invisible way all the way around as I go. Um, this is really useful if you uh, start with a hair cap that's the same color. So I've got my previous strings. I'm going to pull them to the side. Here's my new one. Find the next stitch. There it is there. Careful not to pull my stuffing out. I'm going to put my hook through the previous loop. I'm going to pull down on it uh, a little bit just to tighten it, but not too much because I want to be able to get the new loop of yarn through there without too much trouble. Hook in the new yarn, pull it through the previous loop, through that new stitch, and before I go very far, pull that down. So there we go. So there's our hair all getting nicely knotted in there. And then when I pull it up into a little ponytail, it will um, look a lot fuller than it is because I have this hair cap already there. And like I said, there are 32 stitches all the way around the largest part of the doll um, head, and this is the one of the larger rows. So I know that there's about 32 stitches around that head. So I know I need at least 32 of these, but you can always add more or less depending on the thickness of your yarn and what you kind of doll hairstyle you're doing. So I'm just pulling the new knot, the new loop through the old loop and through the next stitch, tightening that other loop before I leave. And the hair is growing. So there's my current yarn tails, my new loop. Here it is here on my thumb. And I've got to cut some more yarn. So before you run out, so when you get to your last length, if you need more yarn, don't use that length. I mean, you could, you could just measure more if you wanted, but I'm just going to measure out some more lengths of yarn using the length I already have. This is just easier, I feel, than constantly busting out the measuring tape. A membership milestone from Melissa. Hello, Melissa. Thank you, Jada and Mr. for everything that you do. You're my favorite channel when I have a question. Hey, I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Melissa. I appreciate that very much. Just cutting some lengths of yarn here to add to my growing doll hair. Hey, Cherry. Hello to everybody who's just jumping in. Oh, I'm seeing lots of people mentioning Christmas stuff today. How many of you are doing Christmas crochet at the moment? Is that, uh, have we hit? The magical mid midway year 
I'm really glad Donna's doing our snowmen because that is a phenomenal pattern. I love if that. If I do pattern. say so myself, <laughs> even though Jada designed it. Um, I love that snowman. <laughs> I do too. I love pulling them They'll out every year. You'll have to send year. us a picture uh, at our Etsy shop, Donna, when it's done. We'd like to see that. Mm -hmm. Needs a poll. Good point, Caroline. Mr. and Stitches, time for a poll. Okay, um, what should we do? What are you, are you working on Christmas crochet? Yes or no? Oh, okay. That's easy. Yep. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go back into hooking in my doll hair. So let's see here. There's the one I'm working on right now. And I'm going to fold this one in half. So I'm already working my way around the front of the doll. Here's the next stitch. Make sure I go through the existing loop that's there, put the new loop on, pull it back through everything. Oh. When in doubt, pull it out. There we go. Back through everything and then tighten up on the previous loop. There we go. So that's the new strand that I'm working on. Here is the new loop that I've just created. Ta -da! And time for a new one. Oh my gosh, Ronald and Kathy, thank you so much for the gigantic super chat. We enjoy watching and crocheting along with you. You have been an inspiration for us and are downright entertaining. And you both make us smile daily. Love you both. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you, you guys. so much. We really, really appreciate that. We my really gosh, do we ever. appreciate the support. It is a... Uh, uh, tremendously tremendously helpful thank you so much we're really glad to know that we entertain you i'm glad that we're helping to teach people to crochet but i'm much more interested in being entertaining <laughs> i love to laugh i love to laugh i know most people do it makes you feel really good so uh you know i hope that we can certainly bring a smile to your face if not a good hearty belly laugh once in a while Ronald and Kathy get Lula's cruise ship. They yes, honk. Big honk. <laughs> the foghorn comes out. <laughs> Ronald and Kathy get the foghorn. See, I, I feel like somehow that would be insulting. Ronald and Kathy get the foghorn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a reward. I know. Or not. I'm like in some places. I don't think that's it a depends. reward. But... <laughs> Katie, hey Katie, hello. As in Mrs. Doubtfire, can you style the hair into a bun? I'm about to finish making my tissue box cover. It has Minnie and Mickey's on it. Oh, cute. Um, I imagine you could. You'd probably want a much longer ponytail in order to style it into a bun. Just because um, you kind of want to... Uh, you need more yarn to kind of either pull over a little donut, if you were going to make it that kind of a top bun, or just to sort of twist it and turn it into a bun. Uh, but I'm going to go for a ponytail. I feel like that's the easiest one to go with right off the bat. Um, but yes, you could absolutely do a bun. I think you might want much longer hair strands, however. So next hook, original loop, new loop, pull it in, tighten up the old loop. There we go. All those hairs are tucked into place. The poll is up, everyone. Make sure you take part in the poll. Um, you have to go into the chat box on your device, and the poll should be at the top in blue. It's like a blue banner. You need to click on it, and it should pop up for you. So making sure. So far, it looks like we have 58 mm -hmm. votes. 58. Have you started any crochet Christmas crochet projects? I am curious to know. Um, I like to do a little bit of Christmassy stuff in July once in a while, but normally it's August, I think, where my brain really starts to go in that direction. But that might also explain why I'm often scurrying around at the last minute every year to get things finished. <laughs> Nico! <laughs> Nico has picked up something at the, the Etsy shop. Thank you so much, Nico. 
We've got the uh, style and sounds of the Etsy shop. We, we've got Mr. and Stitches on the, uh, the animations. The and hair is looking fantastic. Growing by doll the way. hair here. Very nice hair. Very nice. <laughs> and a gifted membership. Gifted Nico. membership. Thank you, Nico. Nico's got like eight screens going. Who's thank you so much. Winner? The lucky winner is uh, Edina. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There we go. Almost need to cut up. I'm <laughs> keeping up with the Joneses. <laughs> yes, I love a good, I love a good keeping up with the Joneses pun. How how fantastic the Kathy and Ron are Joneses. <laughs> Uh, I, Everyone I, needs to keep up with the Joneses. I have Joneses in my very recent fam familial. Kate and I also need to keep up with the Joneses. Uh, I've got uh, I've got Joneses in my familial history too. My grandmother was a Jones, so. Uh... <laughs> Katie wants to know where I got the megaphone. It was down here in the well. <laughs> I just I just kind of like dug a little and I found one. It still works. Funny. The batteries are good and everything. <laughs> Not an archaeological find, obviously. <laughs> I'm snipping some more yarn here. Lucy, with a membership milestone, a member for three months. Thank you, Lucy. Hi, Jada. Loving the lives. I wanted to make pigtails. Would I, if I wanted to make pigtails, would I need a row of hair down the center parting? I would highly recommend that um, because typically you're going to do a permanent hairstyle when you're making a doll. I mean, yes, you can technically make hairstyles that are more malleable if you're giving it to somebody who wants to sort of play with the hair. But typically in a doll this small, it makes the most sense to make a um, permanent hairstyle. So if you were going to make pigtails on either side, uh, I would do exactly what I'm doing here. Maybe two um two strands per knot in so two so folding two of these guys together at the same time and pulling them in just so you have extra bulk on either side of the head and then before you're done do the exact same thing going up right through the very center so one and then two so you're going to do um folding single strands in half doing it once and then doing it again right next to each other um or doing the double strand knotting uh, looping thing all the way through and making sure that you split it so that you have half of them on one side and half of them on the other. Uh, so yes, I think that would be a great plan um, because you want nice sort of thick looking ponytails on either side of the head. So I am slowly getting all the way around to the other side here. So back where I started, we still need some votes in our current poll. You'll find that up at the top of the live chat. So I'm gonna get some more hair knotted in here. I would like some more feedback on my microphone volume. Uh, I wanna make sure that I'm roughly the same volume as Jada and not too loud. Did we have a question? I, I missed it, I missed it. Sorry gang, I'm, I'm, uh, I'll, I'll go back through the chat in a second. I'm just... Uh, paying attention to what I'm doing here in my hands. So give me one second, unless Mr. can find it and then I'll, I'll be, I'll endeavor to answer. Um, I don't see a question here. I see uh, Katie is trolling me. Uh -huh. Who gave Mr. and Stitches the megaphone, but that's pretty typical. <laughs> um, can you repeat your question, whoever had it? We usually take questions towards the end of the stream, um, but if you want to repeat it, I will, uh, hopefully it'll, it'll pop up in the chat here. Yeah, we're not terribly busy at the moment as I'm just knotting in these little loops of yarn. So I'm happy to answer a question if I can. 
There we go. Almost back to where I started. Okay, how is that for microphone volume? For me, not Jada, for me. <laughs> Looks like I've got two or three more to go, and then we'll see where we're at here. <laughs> okay, the majority I'm getting is better, so. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. As long as everybody can hear me properly and I don't sound like I'm down a well and the mister doesn't sound like he's... It's much more important if you hear me clearly. <laughs> you don't need to hear Jada clearly at all. For trolling purposes, it's important that you hear mister. <laughs> okay, once you're all the way back around, so here's where my, my first one was anchored. In the, in the Basically around the stitch right next to where I am now. You take your last strand that you looped in and you pull those two strands through that final loop and that basically just knots the whole thing off and none of your hair will uh, pull out, at least not that, not that easily. So I'm using a fairly thin but kind of squiggly yarn. I really like the texture of this, it's kind of bizarre and it really does sort of look like hair. So now I've got hair on my doll I'm going to, it looks thicker than it is because obviously I started with that color in the, the skull cap, the hair cap there. And I'm going to smooth it so that I have it all kind of evenly laid over the head. If you got to this point and you thought, ugh, I just don't think it's thick enough, I want more hair, then you could go around the row above, so the next row up from the hairline and do the same thing. You could technically do it to the entire head, but I think that might be a bit much unless you intended to have the hair, you know, long and kind of left out. Um, because you can always, if you were gonna make a, a doll with hair that you wanted to style, then you would probably wanna do that. You'd wanna loop in a length of hair for every single um, stitch all the way through the entire head. Now that's gonna take a little longer than what I did here, but given how small these dolls are, it won't take forever. And once you get into the kind of the, the, uh, the, the zone, you get into the, the rhythm of looping in those, those lengths of yarn, really the longest amount of time spent is in cutting the yarn, in my opinion. But if you feel like you've got enough yarn, um, and I think I'm, I'm pretty content with the way this looks, then you're going to style it. And I wanted to do a ponytail. I'm trying to decide if I want to do like a high pony or maybe a, a low pony. If you were going to do uh, a bun, you could, like I said, you probably want longer hair, but the one way to do it would be to just twist all the yarn and uh, tuck it in like a little top knot. And you'd probably want to sew it down. So you'd want slightly longer lengths, but then you'd twist it just like you would if you were making an actual bun, tuck it in underneath the knot. Again, you'd want longer pieces. And then you'd probably want to go in with a needle and uh, the yarn needle and longer pieces of the yarn and just sort of um, literally sew tack it down. So you're going through the, the loops of the yarn into the head back out again. Um, and that would create a cute little bun up top. But I'm definitely going for a ponytail. I like the bun. The bun's cute. Bun's very cute. Yeah. I like that a suggestion. I'm going to probably use, excuse me, having a little water here. I could use an elastic. I could use a pretty ribbon. I still have a, a bit of this, this yarn left over. So I'm just going to see. I'm just going to experiment with the actual ponytail at the moment before I go. And now do I do it high? Do I do it low? Do I do it at the back? We have a membership gift from Connie. Big thank you to Connie. Connie. And the winner is Marie. 
wonderful. Congratulations to Marie and a big thank you to Connie. Thank you, Connie. I've got this one length of yarn left, so I'm just going to knot it in up front. So I've just folded it in half. If you're going to knot in individual pieces, you would just do what I was doing all the way around, knot the th loop it in half, grab your grab it on the hook of your um your crochet hook, pull it through the stitch in question, and then just pull the two lengths back through the loop, kind of like if you were latch hooking, and then pull tightly, and that will knot it into place. So that's if you're going to do individual bits. Um, I feel like I need a little bit of ribbon or something, she says, looking around the craft table. Of course, I can just probably use a little bit of yarn. I've got plenty of that. Big surprise. Let's see, what have I got down here? I guess I'll end the current poll. Sure. And someone suggested a poll for the hair, unless you've already decided exactly what you want to do. I'm doing a high ponytail. The little doll looks like a mermaid right now. Mermaids have like... Mermaids light. swimming in the water. Mermaids have nice long hair, yes. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do a high pony. So I'm just okay, going to... Okay, the poll's coming in. Incoming. Incoming pool Incoming results. Pool. 54% say nope, 24% say thinking of starting very soon, and 21% say yes. So 20, 20, roughly 20% 20 of you are working on Christmas crochet projects. 25, almost a quarter of you are considering it, and over 50% of you are not going there yet. <laughs> Understood. All right, so what I'm gonna do is loop my yarn around the head a couple times and sort of tighten it as I go just to kind of keep that ponytail from getting slack. There we go. And then I'm going to tie a bow. Now, if you are doing this permanently, you might want to put in an elastic. You might want to actually um, knot in a piece of yarn that's the same color as the hair, create the ponytail, and then maybe put like a pretty ribbon over top of it. But um, this is staying with me for a while. I will not be giving it away, <laughs> at least not to a little kid. So I don't have to worry too much about it getting the hair accessories being pulled out. I think that, <laughs> that is so cute. So now my doll has a little top knot ponytail, like a nice high pony. I've put the little bow in. That's really cute. Can you, um, because of the, there we go. Yeah, we need to kind of see that side angle. So that's how it looks all the way around. And of course, when it's sitting upright, it's going to, gravity will pull the hair down behind the doll. And uh, if you want now, this is a good point, you can take all of your lengths, kind of comb them out with your fingers, and then you can trim them up if you want. Play hairdresser briefly. Definitely needs a little trim. You're gonna straighten out those, uh, those ends. <laughs> there we go. Some more yarn for my stuffing bowl. There. Nice trim ponytail. And now when it's hanging down the back, it'll be all roughly the same length. It'll look nice and neat and tidy. There we go. So that is the high pony. Uh, an easy way to lock in all of those little hairs around the crown. Um, I'm going to try, now this is dark hair, I've got, that is so darn cute, I'm not sure that, eh. you know what, the other thing I was going to do is just show you how to make a more permanent sort of dump of hair, <laughs> so as opposed to putting in the individual strands like I did here, um, there's a way to just sort of make uh, like a coiled pile of hair that you would then stitch to the top of the head. Um, so I've, this is dark. I'm not sure if this is going to come out looking right or not, but I'm also not sure that you really need to know 
any particular stitchery because um, all that you would do basically, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna make a slip knot, put it on my hook. I'm back to using the same hook size that I did to make the doll. So this is a four millimeter hook. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna slip my hook through a stitch at the back of the doll and knot my yarn onto the doll using a slip knot. And now I'm going to chain eh, four, five, try not to split my yarn. Let's do five, five's fun. Is five good? Yeah. So I'm chaining five and I'm slip stitching into a stitch next to where I anchored it. So you can see me slipping my hook right through the stitch and I'm going to just slip stitch, pull up on that, chain five again, and then slip stitch in through a stitch next to that. So there's me slipping my hook in there and slip stitch. And I'm always sort of pulling the little, the little chained loops I'm making out of the way. I'm kind of peeling them out of my way so that I'm not kind of catching them with my yarn as I crochet. Chain five. slip stitch into or around a stitch next to that one. There we go. And what I'm doing... Oh, Mr. and Stitches, we lost the feed. I think we might have lost our camera. Camera. Camera's down. Oh, no. Camera's down. What happened? We've gone dark. Camera connection error. What? what? Come on, we were doing so good. Do you want me to uh, to try something over here? Or? Yeah, can, um, I'm gonna try and turn it off and on again. <laughs> that is weird. Give me, a, give us a sec, everyone. I think we still have audio. Yeah, I think we still. Oh, hey, show, <laughs> show with the entertaining uh, intermission. <laughs> Member for 55 months, loving these live crochet alongs, even the dark parts. <laughs> And the last two Friday tutorials have been so perfect for the summer. Thanks so much, guys. Hey, thank you, Shell. Don't worry. Uh, the audio is good, says Caroline. Great. We still have audio. Okay, the mister is just fiddling around with the uh, cameras here. You know what? Let's do a part two because I don't know um, what's going to happen here. Sure. So we'll, we'll close out. We'll do a part two and we'll, we'll reset it in about five or ten minutes. That sounds okay. If everyone wants to join us there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How's that sound, everybody? Do I'm going guys... to try, I'm gonna try this for a split second. Yeah, okay. I, last time I had to do like 10 different steps, so... Yeah, after all these years it's a podcast, Victor, I was just about to say that. Hey, now it's just the uh, Jada and the Stitches podcast. I got to get my radio <sighs> voice on here and start sounding really, uh, you know, like I got to drop my, my voice in a, an octave. podcast. <laughs> we need a new tune. <laughs> um... Okay, so the Mister's. We're gonna try one thing. He's gonna see if he can get the video camera to reboot. We're really not sure what's going on here. Um, and if that doesn't work, oh, oh my gosh, it's back! Wait, is it? No. We'll have to. Uh, everyone will have to let us know if it's back on, cause. Um, yes, there it is. Bye bye. It looks like it's working. Can you guys see the camera? It might take a few seconds for it to go through. You're right. It wouldn't be a Jade alive without some squirrels. We're back! Yay! You always need squirrels, even though we feed them. They don't care. They don't they care. Just, they're just gonna do their thing. They hey, are. It's back. It worked. It All worked. Right. All right. The Mister with the the mad tech skills. I require. A raise. Yeah, I, I guess so. Maybe yes. with your raise, you can buy a better computer. I put in my request for a raise, <laughs> and a better, and I want the corner office. <laughs> I'm Barbara, member for three months. Thank you, Barbara. Some squirrel emojis. Appreciate it. Love it. <laughs> okay. Yes, exactly. Just remember what you did, says Joanna to Mister. Oh, good luck. <laughs> I had to do like three hundred things just to get this the stream going. <laughs> But you know what? I think we did okay. Um, we're getting reports of good visual and good sound. So yeah, I it's think, back. I think we're almost there. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, we've only got a little bit more to go anyway, so hopefully the camera will hold out. Um, so this is where we left off. I am chaining five and slip stitching around 
the post of each stitch that's next to the one that I did before. So I start by locking my yarn into place with a slip stitch here, chaining five, and then slip stitching around the next stitch. Chaining five, slip stitching around the next stitch. Chaining five, slip stitching around the next stitch, and so on. So instead of doing the loop in version of lengths of yarn like we did here around each stitch, I'm chaining five and slip stitching. And what that's gonna do is create a very thick, curly kind of hair. Now you have to do this for the entire head. So this might take you a little while. We you can... have another gifted membership from Nico. Thank you, Nico. Big thank you. And the winner is Carrie. Carrie has won the membership. Thank you, Nico. Congratulations, Carrie. Um, this can take you a little while. You can vary the number of chains you make. You can change the color of your yarn if you want. Um, but what you're doing is you're building a much thicker hair onto the doll. So I love curly hair on dolls. I love curly hair of all lengths. Um, this makes me think about the original Cabbage Patch Kid dolls that they had when we were kids, us 80s kids. Um, and they, it was all yarny hair, which I loved. Um, some Cabbage Patch Kids had short hair that was curly. Um, other Cabbage Patch Kids had long ponytails um, and it was yarn and sometimes it was it was like little loops of yarn that was the curly hair and I just I just absolutely love it so this is kind of an homage to that you're just chaining and slip stitching chaining and slip stitching uh, the longer the number of chains you use the more um, so if you use a whole bunch of chains your loops are going to be a lot longer um, if you use fewer chains, your loops will be shorter. I like that length, but it, you also don't have to stick to the same number of chains the whole head through. If you wanted to do smaller, nubbier little bits up top or even longer ones, you can absolutely do that. Um, and this is kind of fun. It's also, it, it's a bit of a yarn eater. It's gonna use up more yarn than the actual cut lengths do. But since these are definitely a, a scrap kind of project, I wouldn't worry about that. And not all hair is the same color on a head. You can always like loop in some extra yarn, not in different colors if you want. Um, a doll with, with lots of different yarn colors in their hair is kind of fun too. So I'm just chaining five to start and then slip stitching. I'm sticking my hook in and working around the post of the next stitch, wherever I can kind of grab it. There we go. So I just slip my hook in around the post of a stitch and then slip stitch. That creates a nice little loop. And you can see my hair kind of starting to stick out all over the place. So this doll is gonna have short curly hair the Cabbage Patch Kids too. They were, I mean, I was just that perfect age in the 80s where I think everybody was kind of obsessing over them. Um, I just wanted to answer Joanna's question. The um, flesh tones, I'm not sure exactly what Yarn Jade is using, but we did recently buy a bunch of um, the Lion brand, is it called Skeen Tones? Skeen Tones! And they've got a, an amazing selection of nice yarn yeah. with all the variation colors you need. This is so this is what it looks like. Definitely look out for that at, uh, I think we got it at Michael's. We got it at Michael's, um, but I think they still have some on the website. It's their basic stitch line. It's anti-pilling acrylic and the Skeen Tones, they, ha they have like, all kinds of skin of skin tones in the skin tones line and i love it they're gorgeous colors um it's got a really nice little bit of a sheen this is not sponsored by lion brand but you guys know how much i love lion brand yarn um but yeah this so this one i'm using is almond i picked it because i thought it was pretty close to um i'm a little red i'm a little rosy because i've got sunburn over this over the weekend but in the winter this is pretty much my skin color kind of an almond color um, and that's the one I picked up, but they have all kinds of gorgeous tones. I really wanted them all, but I couldn't justify buying them all. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but yeah, that's the one that this doll is using at the moment. Um, I didn't quite catch all of the names, but I think they've still got them all on the lionbrand.com website. Just to clarify, this specific live stream is not sponsored, but Lion Brand Yarns does sponsor our show. Yes. So we are happy to shout them out. And, oh, yeah. And we absolutely love their yarn. Great company, great yarn. I, I We love them. We wouldn't work with them if we didn't. <laughs> So every time I chain five, I'm trying to get my hook in underneath the stitch that's just next to where I like I slip stitched previously. I, so I'm doing exactly the same thing, except instead of looping lengths of yarn around the head of my doll, I'm actually crocheting and slip stitching as I go. There, this is fun. So you don't have to be neat and tidy. This doesn't have to be perfect. The number of chains you use in every single length don't have to be the same every single time. You don't have to make sure that you're slip stitching around the right stitch or getting into the very, like you can be as messy and as bonkers as you want because hair is organic. So anytime you're crocheting an organic shape, I tend to say that the messier and the less even you are, the better because then it looks a little more natural. So I'm almost all the way around here and I'm just gonna keep going uh, up above the line where I started so that I can find all of the actual crocheting to the head of the doll um, in the hair color kind of area. But um, now I'm just gonna higgledy piggledy grab a place to slip in my hook and slip stitch. It doesn't really matter. But now if I hold them up, you can see, oh my gosh, this is so cute. So I've got I've got a curly little, <laughs> I've got a curly little mop of hair and because it's a little on the stiffer side, I will be able to kind of style it a bit. I'll be able to kind of push some in some directions for bangs, pull some down, um, and I'm gonna work around the entire head and I'll see how far I get with this yarn and if I have to get in different colors, I'll do that. I also might make this doll a, um, a hat down the road, we shall see. I also might start going to just four chains instead of five because I don't need them to be that thick up top. I might space out where I'm actually anchoring the tops and bottoms of my chained lengths. So you see I'm chaining eh, four or five and then I'm just sort of randomly picking a spot to slip my hook in but I'm doing it now all above the line where I worked the last row of chains and slip stitches and that's going to thicken up the hair on this doll quite substantially. That uh, that hairstyle is looking pretty darn good, it's, I have to say. It's cute. I mean, come on. Come on, how cute is that? Curly hair. So I'm trying to keep all my previous loops out of the way. I'm chaining, chaining about four, and then I'm slipping my hook in underneath a stitch in the hair color area and slip stitching. Sorry guys, if I just slipped off camera for a second there, let me try that again. There's four. And I'm just gonna grab through, through that stitch. Not really paying too much attention to where I put them or I don't really care if some of my loops are tight, some of them are loose doesn't matter. The other nice thing about doing hair like this is that you are not, um, it's not going to be pulled out as easy. Um, if you if it is going to a child and they're going to be playing with it, um, especially if there's other kids in the house or pets, then this hair kind of hairstyle where it's built directly into the doll is a little safer because it's less likely to come out or come undone. And of course we always want to err on the side of safety.
Hello to everybody who's just catching us. We're working on some doll hair today. This is uh, not tricky stuff. You can be as crazy and as messy as you want because it is an organic shape. So uh, the better attached, the better. So if you lean sort of air on the side of, of really well attached hair, it's just sort of generally a safer plan. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. I love this curly hair. <laughs> Oh, it looks really cute. It's so cute. <laughs> I'm running out of this this really pretty brown color, so I'm gonna have to switch up my browns here in a minute. If you run out, you can just um, give the little guy a baseball cap. Yeah. Because that would look super cute too. And then you can give it to me as a gift. <laughs> the little doll. It's got hair like you. Yes. Lots and lots of tight curls. It does. <laughs> so now I've just switched up to chaining three. Um, I'm kind of Not worrying too much about where I anchor it, but they're roughly kind of next to each other. I might be zigzagging my anchors uh, back and forth a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, we're going for as, as um, organic a look as we can get. The nice thing about working up into the skull is that uh, the rows have fewer and fewer stitches as you go up. <laughs> so those circles, those concentric circles get smaller and smaller. Ooh, didn't quite grab it there. There we go. So I don't know if we can make this a poll, but I am very interested to know what everybody is making right now? What's the what's the uh, what's the general kind of project that everybody's into? Are we into summery stuff? Are we into looking ahead to the fall? Are we into wearables, toys, decor? What's everybody into right now? go back to chain lengths of four just as I'm Let's working see across here. the crown. We've got Summer Poncho making a scarf for a Christmas gift, snowmen, and snowmen. dialysis sleeves. Keeps everything in place. A sweater kick, Tunisian blanket. Ooh. Hmm. Wow, lots of projects. Halloween stuff. Well, of course. I mean, we're, we're getting there. I mean, I know we just started summer, but it does come quick. It does. Blankets. Blankets are blank. Blankets and what's the, what's the classic crochet stuff? Blankets, and. Blankets and dishcloths. And dishcloths. <laughs> would you say? I would say granny squares and blankets are like, are like the top tier crochet stuff. Yeah, I'd say that's kind of the maybe the default. Is the that the default? The default blankets. Yeah. Blankets and baby stuff. And baby stuff. Yeah. Baby stuff is small and simple and fast, typically. Summer says the kids have until September to decide on costumes, and that is it. Oh, wow. You're letting them go that off. long? You decide by September 1st. 
You're letting them go to September 1st? Well, I'd like to know, Summer, Have you? did you watch the new Nintendo Direct? Did you see all the awesome Mario games coming out? Did you scream as loud as we did? <laughs> I've already pre-ordered mine. Thank you very much. I'm actually going to make it here, I think. I don't have to add any extra hair. But if I go to make them a hat, it's going to have to be nice and big so it can fit over top of all this... <laughs> curly hair <laughs> summer and jessica rabbit oh yes i did yes <laughs> yes we were so excited boy this fall uh, for nintendo gamers this fall is going to be phenomenal yeah and very expensive <laughs> we already started saving our pennies yes okay so i've got hair all the way up to the top i'm going to literally take that end and fasten off like I normally would and then I'm going to pull both ends into the body or the in this case the head of my doll oh my gosh oh my gosh he's got curly hair this is so cute we have a gifted membership from Nico Nico thank you thank uh, you Nico family member from Turkey <laughs> um Nico who did who won it looks like the winner is Kristen big congratulations to Kristen nice gonna take my congratulations to Kristen thank you to Nico I'm just weaving in my last little tail here I'm just pulling it into the head of the doll and then I will wiggle it in any extra little tail that is left out I am quite delighted with this hair I used up what was left of the hair I just kind of made it work and uh, oh my gosh oh, I love it look at this little curly mop it is so cute so now this little guy has curly hair and the nice thing about um, about again you want to start with if you're going to add hair to your doll you want to start with that hair color at the top of the doll pattern and make that hair cap like we did when we built the doll to start that way when you're putting in hair whether you're um, sort of pulling in knotting in long strands like this one or you're actually building it right onto the doll like we did here with like the little chains and slip stitches it completely blends in and it ends up looking a lot thicker than it actually is. I love this hair. Absolutely love it. It's it's so cute. So I've got one curly headed doll. I just, I'm, I'm going to be playing with this all day. And we've got one long top ponytail here. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, I would love to take some questions about doll hair or doll making in general. Um, I'd be this happy too if I had this this thick curly I head of hair. I love both hairstyles. They are both phenomenal. They're so Look how cute. cute they are with hair. I like know, eh? On hair. Just makes it absolutely makes it. Yeah. Um, so keep in mind, Jada Jada um, intentionally left the detailed hair out because the dolls were initially for super super little ones. Yeah, they're supposed to be just babies, little and babies, babies don't have a whole but, lot of uh, hair. If you're gonna give it to an older child, then the hair is super cute yeah. for sure. So there's a couple ways to put hair on. So our ebook does not include actually building hair into the doll. Um, but if you do have the ebook and you did want to add hairstyles, these are, would definitely be for older dolls or older, older children playing with the dolls. Or even just if you wanted to add hair to your doll for your friends or whoever you're, you're giving it to. Um, um, this is a hey, handy hey, little wife, tutorial on how to do can that. Can I interrupt you, wife? Sure. So Marie is saving up for a PS5 for her boyfriend. Wow. And I just thought maybe you should know that. Uh, are you? <laughs> I'm not saying any. I'm just. I'm just sharing the. Information is Marie with also you. proposing she with that? I is mean, that's saving for a PS5 for her boyfriend. <laughs> I'm an act like I'm a husband. I'm just saying, you know, I, you know, just saying. <laughs> love it, love it. Oh my gosh! Well, well done, Marie. Now I'm gonna listen to that all afternoon. Just. <laughs> Hey Jada, hey Jada, did you hear about Marie buying a PS5 for her boyfriend? Did you hear about that? I'm going to remind you every day for like till Christmas. Yes, I'm sure you will. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so there we go. That's the two different hairstyles. I'd say those are the two easiest way to add hair to your doll. Like I said, chained slip stitches sort of the slip stitch built-in method very secure also really lovely fantastic texture or if you wanted to have 
kind of a long ponytail or pigtails like we mentioned earlier how you would want to do that or even putting in a bun remember for the the, the more complicated um, long hair style that you want to add to your doll it's just like real hair in real life the more the longer your hair the more you can do so you can put in a bun you can put in sort of like braids so you the, the longer the more complicated the hairstyle you want the longer you want to make your hair strands remember to keep your measuring tape handy and to start from the edge of the hairline and then measure to the crown and then however long on top of that you might want to want um, oh, we've just lost okay, our just camera so again. Know, our little webcam has absolutely had enough. Um, I don't know, maybe it doesn't like yarn or crochet, but... Very possible. The, okay. The webcam is like, I'm done. I'm taking a break. Well, if I, I'm going to say let's... I, we still have audio, though, so we'll wrap it up. Let's and wrap I'll it up. And see if I can figure out why it uh, keeps quitting on us. <laughs> okay, so, um, yes, we're back to podcasting here. <laughs> Uh, I will take some pictures in really good light and post them on the community post and we'll probably refresh the thumbnail. So if you want to come back and watch this live stream again later, just for some tips on hair, um, it'll be easier to find the stream. So we'll do that. If you have any questions about uh, doll hair or adding hair to a crochet doll, please feel free to leave them below. If you've got photos that you want to share with us or with the community, please give them to us at our Etsy shop. You can pop into the Etsy shop, click on message seller and the little either camera icon or landscape picture that's there. And that will let you either take a photo or upload a photo. And if it's okay to share your pictures with the rest of the world, please let us know. Uh, Cause we will ask otherwise. And um, <laughs> sorry about the video. Obviously our poor little camera is, uh, is kind of tired. I'm not sure what's happening there, but we'll figure it out as we always do. Mr. And Stitches does, does, he manages to plug one hole in the technology dike until, and then another one, another, another leak <laughs> shows up somewhere else. Um, but thank you guys for hanging out with us on a Monday. Thank you to Nico and to Connie and to Catherine and Ron for being so generous. And to everybody who's popped into our shop and picked up a pattern. Thank you so much. Your support goes an awfully long way to keeping us going here. We will see you Friday. I want to know what you're all making. Uh, we're going to put some posts out on the community tab later today. So look out for those. I love your comments. Keep them coming. It does help keep us inspired here as well. Pop into our shop and say hi if you want. Um, and leave comments on our videos. We will see you Friday for the video. And of course, next Monday for another live stream. Stay tuned to the community tab. We'll keep you posted on all the fun stuff going down here and whether or not we fix our camera. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Stitches, do you have anything to add? Uh, I just want to remind anyone who is new, um, we will be, our summer schedule is going to be Mondays at 11 a.m. Eastern will be our live crochet along, live stream crochet along. And then Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern will be our classic slash standard slash traditional crochet tutorial video. And that's going to be for the summer and possibly the foreseeable future. We will see. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Great. Okay, everyone. Thanks so much for hanging out and for putting up with our camera issues. <laughs> we will see you Friday for a regularly scheduled video tutorial. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, have a gorgeous week, and we will see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>